Welcome to this video lecture on the seven basic quality tools. These tools are used to explore processes and solve problems in a whole variety of settings. The first tool identifies what is causing a problem. This tool is called a fishbone diagram and we draw a diagram like a fishbone with six protruding bones at the side and on these bones we write the categories that are inclined to cause problems in any process. Men, meaning people, material, what we're processing, machines, what we're using to process the material, methods, how we're doing it, milieu, the environment, and measurements. Suppose, for example, we have a problem with burnt toast. What could be causing the problem? Maybe it's men. Maybe the people supervising that process have not been trained. Maybe it's material. Maybe we have changed from toasting bagels to toasting sourdough bread. And because it's different, it's causing a problem in the process. Maybe it's machines. Maybe it's the toaster is dirty or is broken. Maybe it's methods. Maybe we're not doing it right. Maybe it's milieu. Maybe the place is too dark where the toaster is located and we can't see what we're doing. Maybe it's measurements. Maybe there is no problem, but we are judging that the toast is burnt when in fact it's not. The second tool is to identify where a problem is occurring. And this tool is called a check sheet. So we put a check on the check sheet every time a problem arises opposite the name of the problem. So we see which problem is occurring most often. We can also do this like a map. One famous such map from history is during the London cholera epidemic of 1854. Dr. John Snow decided he would put a spot on the map at the address of every patient. And he found that the spots concentrated around Broad Street, and in particular, the Broad Street pump. That led him to conclude that the source of the outbreak was the water in the Broad Street pump, and he had the handle removed from the pump. So a concentration diagram shows you where problems are happening, and that often gives a clue about what's causing the problem and a possible solution. Our third quality tool tells us when to intervene. And this tool is called a control chart. We plot some measurement on a chart, like a time series from left to right. And only when the points rise or fall by a significant amount do we intervene. Measurements are always going to rise and fall because that's just the nature of random variation. But a control chart has this extra feature that there are control limits placed at three sigma. That is, placed in a position that's unlikely to be violated if the process is behaving itself. And so this type of tool, a control chart, allows us to tell the difference between random variation, which we should just let slide, and assignable variation, variation that has arisen for some particular cause. It shows us where to draw the line so that we say, now we need to do something. The fourth uh, quality tool uh, shows us how a variable is distributed. And this tool is a histogram. It's a well-known tool. For example, a histogram of deaths in Dublin in 1900 shows a huge peak at age zero, telling us a lot of people are dying, well, in birth. And another peak uh, toward the end of life, not surprisingly, but also a third peak in the 20s and 30s, which were probably uh, mothers dying during childbirth. So we can see here's an opportunity to improve life expectancy by providing better antenatal care for both babies and their mothers. The fifth type of uh, quality tool is called a Pareto chart. And this tells us which problem we should address first. A Pareto chart is basically a bar chart where the larger bars come first. So if we've got, let's say, reports of breakdowns from higher cars, let's see what's causing most breakdowns. It's battery problems. Okay, if we fix that problem, we have fixed more problems than if we addressed any other problem like puncture or lost key. So it shows us where to begin so that we get the best reward for our efforts. The sixth quality tool is a scatter plot. And this helps to address the why question. Why are the problems occurring? And on the scatter plot, we plot one variable against another variable. Let's say we plot the exam mark of students against their attendance to see, could this be a reason for low marks? And we find, yes, there is some 
relationship between the two. Students with lower attendance tend to gain lower marks of the exams. So this graph points out to us that the predictor variable, attendance, seems to be having an impact on the response variable, which is exam mark. And so it tells us why problems are occurring and therefore what we can probably do about those problems. The seventh uh, quality tool is called a run chart. And it addresses the problem, what kind of variation is occurring? And a run chart is a time series plot with the median showing. And it shows us if the points are occurring in clusters, which means they're similar for a time and then they change. So let's say we plot tablet weight and we find there are clusters. It means there's heavy tablets for a while, then there's lighter tablets for a while. It just indicates that there's maybe batch to batch variation resulting from the way the process is set up at different times. It might also show us if there's mixtures, that is, if there's high and low values, but no values in the middle. That suggests that the material has been mixed from two sources. Maybe two batches have been mixed together. Or maybe there's a high and a low cavity in our tablet press. It tells us if there's trends, if there's a slow and steady movement upwards or downwards, if there's something accruing in the process that's causing the process to drift. Or it tells us if there's oscillation. Is a big one always followed by a little one? Big one, little one, big one, little one. And this can happen with certain processes where there's a dependence of one unit on the unit that went before. And that gives us a clue about how to address this. So these quality tools are easy to use, not much expertise is required, and they're quite intuitive. And then if they give a clue about something, that can be followed up with more sophisticated statistical analysis if that's necessary. You can read all about this in section 8E in the textbook Applied Statistics.